I think we're ready to start. Um, I know that uh, we're going to have um, Mr. Delgado is going to be online. And I also know that Commissioner Lucy is running a bit late this morning, but he will be here. We will call this meeting, this concurrent meeting of the Washoe County Board of Commissioners, the Truckee Meadows Fire Protection District, the Sierra Fire Protection District, the Reno City Council, the Spark City Council to order. And this is, the date is Monday, September 21st. And this meeting is actually beginning at 8.45 a.m. So, Madam Clerk, would you like to call roll? Certainly, Madam Chair. Marsha Bigler, oh, Chair. Minute. Wait a minute. We forgot the pledge. How could I forget the pledge? Shame on me. Ms. Dewar, would you lead us? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, would you stop? <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Stewart. Okay, now, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Madam Chair. Marsha Burke Bigler, Chair. Here. Kitty Jung, Vice Chair. Present. Von Hartung. Here. Jeannie Herman. Here. Bob Lucy is absent and will be joining us shortly. County Manager John Sorry. Slaughter. He's Oops. walking in. Okay. <laughs> John Slaughter, County Manager. Present. Assistant District Attorney Paul Lipparelli. Here. I'm Nancy Parent, County Clerk. You have a quorum. Thank you. Madam Mayor. Hey, thank you. City of Reno, will you please call the roll? Councilmember Breckis? Here. Dewar? Here. Bogato is here. Here. McKenzie? Here. Darden? Here. Bob Zine? Here. And Mayor Sheedy? City Sparks, Madam Clerk. Madam Clerk. Mayor Martini. Here. Council Members Ratty. Here. Lawson. Absent. Smith. Here. Bybee. Here. Schmidt. Here. City Attorney Adams. Here. City Manager Driscoll. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Um, Madam Clerk, we will go with public comment now. Thank you. First up this morning is Joseph Benedict, followed by Ross Tisserich. Hello. Um, I just wanted to address a problem that applies to all of us here sitting in this room. If you drank any water that came out of your uh, tap water this morning, uh, you have trace amounts of carcinogens and also chemicals that are very harmful to our bodies inside of our system. So... I just want to make it aware that everyone, um, the city of Reno is spraying pesticides all along the river to kill weeds and stuff, and it's getting into our drinking water. And sure, it goes through the filtration system, the treatment um, process that um, it comes back under our houses, but they cannot remove all the levels of poisons and toxins that are in the water. And so a percentage of that is ending up inside of our bodies, and over a long period of time, you might consume more than you, you think you are. Like in one day, you might think you're getting trace amounts, but who knows over 10 years what kind of effects it could take on your body, and it really builds up. And not just in us, but in our pets. You know, we all have pets at home. We give them tap water. These pets are drinking the pesticides that are being sprayed, like, right along the river. So, and along with, uh, it goes to the schools. All of our children are drinking poisoned water while they go to school all day long, and... It's, it's really a big problem, and it might be a universal problem, but this universal problem starts within ourselves. We need to change. We need to make a difference. We might be comfortable in our houses having running water, but, you know, like, we need to realize that this water isn't just water. It's poison, and it, it may possibly be population control, that um, the population of people is uh, decreasing because they're getting sick from things like cancer and other problems and birth defects and this all takes a toll on all of us and um, you know we should all be very aware that what we're doing to our environment and ourselves so I'd like to ask the city of Reno will you please stop spraying poison on all of us on all of the plants that we drink, all the organic vegetables that people think are organic are being watered with poisonous water. So your organic vegetables are not organic, I'm sorry. Um, 
So this is all a problem that we all need to face, and we, um, I think that it's going to take all of us to stand up and make a change. So what, what does the city of Reno think about uh, drinking uh, chemicals and poisonous water every morning when they wake up? Do you guys, could you guys answer that question? Like, how do you guys feel? We do not answer questions during public comment in these functions, so please continue. All right, I didn't know that. It's my first time here, but I just want you guys to know that I care about all of you and that I want you guys to not have any poison inside of your bodies and because we're born without it, so we don't need it to live, right? All right. Thank you. Ross Tisserich, followed by Jeff Church. How's it going, you guys? Is everybody feeling good today? Yeah? Oh, I forgot you can't answer any questions. All right. Okay, so I got a joke for you, okay? Could you right. please state your name for the record? Oh, my name is Ross. All right, so I got a joke Full for name, you. Full name, please. All right, my time's running now. My name's Ross Tosevich. Uh, I got a joke for you, okay? All right, so knock, knock. Is anybody you guys going to say who's there? I'll bite who's there. Pesticides. Say pesticide too. Pesticides are being spread all over the river. They're getting into the drinking water. It's not cool. I hope you guys stop it. And uh, how come you guys aren't laughing? I guess I'm not good at telling jokes. All right, so uh, this right here is a gas mask, and this is what we use when we spray stuff, you know? Like, and uh, if, it's not, if it's not safe to breathe, how can it be safe to drink? All right? So the EPA says that Trace amounts of this are chemical are safe, but I don't really believe them. You know, uh, we're putting our lives at risk. We're putting our families' lives at risk, and, and we're also putting our future generations at risk. So we got to stop this right now. So I'm going to ask you guys, can you guys stop spraying today? Uh, I forgot you don't answer any questions either. So, so I got this uh, Roundup right here, and I'm going to drink it if you guys don't stop. <laughs> Okay, we're going to take a five-minute recess, please. Okay, we will call this meeting back to order. We want to take this opportunity to once again thank the Reno PD and thank all of our firefighters and the HAZMAT team. Thank the Sparks PD also and also our sheriff's deputies who came in. We want to thank all of you for everything and we all want to thank all of you in the audience for your patience and all of the elected officials who have been hanging around cooling their heels. So, let's get started. Um, we were on public comment. <laughs> Madam Clerk. Really? We have no more comments at this time. <laughs> Bonus. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Moving on. All right, then I need a motion for approval of the agenda from the commissioners. So moved. Second. I, I, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Um, Mr. Mayor? City of Sparks, all in favor? <laughs> Move to approve. Second. Do you have a second? Second. 
Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Smith, seconded by Mr. Schmidt. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Madam Mayor. All right. May I have a motion from the City of Reno? So moved. Second. Aye. A motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Okay, we will go to item number six, and that is an update on the automatic aid agreements with Truckee Meadows Fire Protection District, Sierra Fire Protection District, City of Sparks Fire Department, and North Lake Tahoe Fire Protection District in regards to SB 185 compliance. Good afternoon. Uh, Mr. Chief. Chairman Burpickler, Mayor Martini, and Mayor Sheevy, Council, and Commissioners, good afternoon. For the record, I'm Charlie Moore, Fire Chief for Truckee Meadows Fire. I just wanted to go over briefly uh, our process in determining compliance with uh, the automatic aid agreement as it respects uh, North Lake Tahoe and the city of Sparks. Uh, the, uh, the process whereby we determine automatic aid areas is actually simply described. It's fairly complicated with respect to analysis and programming CAD. So what we do is simply a GIS analysis of who gets uh, there quicker to any point along any roadway, and in fact, we measured this every uh, 30 seconds and about every 500 feet along every point of every roadway. So with that, we're able to determine the points then of who gets to a location faster, and we're able to draw a polygon around it. And from that polygon, all the addresses within that polygon are geocoded. And then from there, code is written into the CAD programming where uh, we tell the dispatcher what unit to respond from what agency. So whether it's a structure fire, structure engines are responded, uh, perhaps water tenders are, di are dispatched, and uh, in a brush uh, fired water tenders in a brush engine. Quite simply, that's how it's done. So we tested this again in the city of Sparks, and we found only one area that uh, the city of Sparks would be faster to TM, and that was at the University Farms. It's a very small pasture area, so we've added that to the run strings. Uh, we, we verified that the existing automatic gate areas between TAM and the city of Sparks were accurate, and so there was very, very little change to that. So uh, I'm able to testify that uh, the relationship between North Lake Tahoe and TM and the city of Sparks and TM, uh, and it is our belief that that complies with SB 185. And Madam Chair, if it uh, would please uh, the councils and the board, I would invite Chief Garrison to come up and also North Lake Tahoe if they have any additional comments. Okay. Chief Harrison? Good afternoon. Madam Chair, for the record, Tom Garrison, Sparks Fire Department, Fire Chief. Um, Chief Moore and I have been in, our departments have been in a automatic aid agreement for just a little over three years now. In that time, we have shared our departments over a thousand calls, almost 50-50. Um, and the reason why so many calls is because this automatic aid agreement is all risk. It works well for the city of Sparks, works well for the county of Washoe, and uh, Chief Moore is correct. There was only one small area where we thought an adjustment needed to be made, and that was to the University Farms area. And I've already agreed that the City of Sparks Fire Department will provide automatic aid to that area as well. So um, my encouragement is that you accept this presentation. And I believe in terms of our relationship and, and the areas where we would be providing automatic aid to Washoe County, they're in full compliance with SB 185. Thank you, Chief Garrison. I appreciate it. Um, I believe... There he is. I knew he was here somewhere. <laughs> nice haircut. Nice thank you, sir. Uh, good afternoon. Mike Brown, Fire Chief of the North Lake Tahoe Fire Protection District. And uh, thank you for inviting us down. Um, it's been quite the morning, that's for sure. Um, when it comes to SB 185, um, we talk about automatic aid and automatic aid agreements. We also use the closest forces concept. Um, we are in compliance with that, with the Truckee Meadows Fire Protection District when it comes to our areas of a boundary when it comes to the Mount Rose Corridor. Um, also with Nevada Division of Forestry, as well as the United States Forest Service Lake Tahoe Basin Management Unit. So we look at everything when it comes to our municipal departments, but we also have our federal agencies as well that also have an act when it comes to the suppression of fires. So we're in compliance with those organizations and agencies, and we look to assistance that we can do with any other agencies, that's for sure. So if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to field those. 
Thank you, Chief Brown. Appreciate you being here. Any member of, of the councils or the commission have questions for any of these three chiefs? Ms. Breckis. Um, I have a question for Chief Moore. So in these map boundary areas, um, did you also look at the development potential within each of those within the city or in the, where the city is going out into the unincorporated Washoe County? Did you look at vacant and development potential, whether entitled in some way or through land use zoning, just, you know, the range of development that could occur on those to understand, you know, going forward what land uses and changing character character might occur? Uh, the answer, answer, Councilwoman, is no. We looked at existing conditions because we know that this is going to change when the Southeast Connector is built, when and if we move any fire stations, there'll be new conditions that will change uh, the automatic aid areas. So we went with what we know today, and the agreement then calls for adjustments every year as conditions change. Okay. Mr. Smith. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I just want to, anybody can answer the question. All we're doing is extending what we've been doing for a long period of time, but just changing one specific area that was not in any one of the original agreements. Is that correct? That's correct, Council. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Schmidt. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Um, I believe, do we have any public comment on this? There is no public comment. Okay. I believe then we need a motion, and if I'm correct in this, do we need a motion from all three entities from the Truckee Meadows Fire Protection District and from the City of Reno? The, um, the staff report does not include the City of Sparks, and yet yeah, we, we, did one from Sparks, yeah. we just discussed the City of Sparks, so I think the staff report is incorrect in that we also need a motion from the City of Sparks. So we'll start with the county. Do I have a motion to um, accept this agreement? I mean, accept this, what do I need to say? Do I have a motion? I'm so moved. <laughs> I have a motion and a second. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, motion from the city of Sparks. Move to accept the report. Second. Okay, we have a motion from Mr. Smith, seconded by Ms. Bybee to approve the motion. All, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passed unanimously. Thank you. <laughs> May I have a motion from the city of Reno? I'll make a motion to accept the report. I'll second that. The motion is second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much. We will move on to number seven, which is a presentation discussion and possible approval of an automatic aid agreement between Truckee Meadows Fire Protection District and the City of Reno Fire Department. Chief. Hey, Madam Chair, for the record, Charlie Moore, Fire Chief for Truckee Meadows Fire. So the same methodology that I previously described is the same methodology we used uh, in the analysis uh, between TM and Reno. So we studied Reno into TM and TM into Reno. And uh, it, it, quite frankly, it's the same GIS analysis that each agency uses to dispatch the closest engine with it, within its own corporate limits. So we've used that to figure out what engine is, is closer, and I believe the city of Reno has used the same methodology. So this process started by uh, the county GIS running these response times analysis, and, and we sent them out to uh, the city of Reno and city of Sparks. And it was the job of each individual agency then to study where these polygons would be drawn. Uh, and that's quite simply how we got uh, to the areas. Um, briefly stated, where, where Reno is going to help us is in Lemon Valley, some areas in Geiger Grade, uh, and uh, various areas, uh, Collin Ranch particularly, so those are the three major areas. And uh, so we've agreed uh, to those polygons. Uh, the one area that we still have a question about uh, is in South Reno because the GIS data showed uh, an area of approximately seven square miles uh, where TM Engine 14 would respond faster. And uh, it, the, uh, the city proposed reducing that seven square miles to an area of about 1.7 square miles. Uh, I want to state for the record that it is not TM's intention to insert itself into uh, Reno's response area, uh, nor do we want to want more work uh, than we need to do, but we're simply trying to maintain fidelity to the, to the legislation. Uh, the legislation's predominant theme is to respond the closest firefighting vehicle regardless of the jurisdiction. 
And when you read SB 185 carefully, it seems to suggest and seems to require that the agency with the firefighting vehicle closest to the incident is mandated to respond. So the reason why we question that is simply that we want to maintain fidelity to the legislation. Uh, we've asked the city if there's uh, an objective uh, criteria other than the GIS analysis that we could rely on to accept their map. Uh, but uh, it's my belief that, that the GIS is, is pretty darn accurate. So uh, nevertheless, uh, that will need to be discussed among uh, council and, uh, and the commission about what, what that area should look like. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, if the city wants to maintain 1.7 square miles, I don't have a problem with that as long as your legal counsel tells you that you don't have some obligation within the state statute to insist on more. So that is really where we're coming from is that we just want to make sure that we're complying with the statute because uh, it, it really is fairly clear uh, this is what you've got to do. Thank you, Chief Moore. Um, just one moment, Ms. Stewart. I believe Commissioner Hartong has his hand up first. Thank you, Madam Chair. Chief, I appreciate all the work that you guys have put into this, and I appreciate all the work that the City of Reno has put in, and I appreciate all the work that the City of Sparks has put in. We saw a scenario earlier where we had a response of multiple agencies. I did not care who responded. It made no difference to me whatsoever as a commissioner as a citizen. I was thrilled to see the response that occurred. And I believe that regardless of, of where we're talking about, the situation we're talking about, I think that citizens are going to be thrilled to see anybody respond at any time, knowing that backups are on their way, either from TM or the city of Reno or the city of Sparks. Thank you, Commissioner. The, 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 the deltas in time between the response agencies are really not that long, and I think it's an important fact to know that this is not a response in lieu of another agency. It's a tandem response. It's a tandem response. So if, if we were responding ahead of the city of Reno, the city of Reno is still responding with their full alarm and vice versa. Yes. The city of Reno is responding for us. We're still coming with everything that we have. So in my opinion, that the service level actually improves. It doesn't degrade. Uh, because uh, in, in a matter of two minutes, you've got to arrive, and firefighting really doesn't begin until you hit a hydrant, uh, you size it up, you secure utilities, you deploy lines, and by that time, the, the, the uh, responding agency is going to be there, and then the real firefighting can, can begin. So in my opinion, you know, you're, not, you're, you're not only getting there with three or four, you're getting there with, with seven, really. If, if Reno is second due for us, and TM is second due for Reno, you're arriving with seven firefighters at really no additional cost to any agency unless the operational period for the fire becomes an extended period over 12 hours, and in which case there's money and cost reimbursement to build into this so that the agency helping is reimbursed. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Hartung. Um, Ma Madam Dewar. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Chief. Um, I just, uh, I happen to cover the South Meadows area, so I just wanted to make sure I understood you were sort of highlighting that as a, as a, I guess, an exception or something. And I just wondered if we could get the map up so I could make sure I was following along. Sure. Uh, the reason that, and I think it's a map for whoever's running the maps that says RFD South Virginia Wedge, and it says TM. FPD to RFD, South Virginia Wedge. I think that's the area you were talking about? Yes. Okay. Is this the same map? I guess this has more colored area. Mine is not colored, so. Uh, anyway, I just wanted to find out what you were saying. You were speaking about a GIS area, but then I thought I read in the report that you also factored in travel times and those kind of issues. So could you just re restate or re-clarify uh, the point you were trying to make, sure. if you would? So it may seem intuitive that the, that the fire station that's closest with geographic proximity would be the fastest, but we tested that assumption, and that's not always true. In fact, in, in some cases, the closest fire station as the crow flies is not the fastest in response time. Right. So that's why uh, the three chiefs decided on that it's actually travel time uh, that we're going to use as criteria. I think that's great. So what this map depicts is, this is what GIS said, is, is this, uh, this dark blue area 
uh, and that, this is the data, it's not me, it's just simply the GIS report that said uh, Station 14, uh, which is right at uh, Damani uh, near Walmart, this is where we would uh, arrive ahead of Engine 12, even though you can see that Engine 12 and Engine 14 are fairly close to each other. So to take, uh, by way of an example, let's say the, the U.S. Bank at the Summit Sierra Mall, I tested that specific area because it's kind of on the, on the edge there, and GIS says that TM would arrive about two minutes faster than the city. Uh, and you can even see above Engine 12, uh, there's some area where the proximity is just de minimis, but nevertheless, the, the travel time for Engine 12 to get around to that area could be uh, longer than it would take 14 to get there. So again, you know, I have, I have no dog in this fight other than uh, just to make sure that we're complying with the law, and uh, we're just asking for some objective criteria. Maybe that objective criteria is they actually did response time drills with your engine to these areas, and if it showed that it's faster than what our GIS data says, then I think that's great. We could use that. And just for clarification, when you're saying GIS, it's not aerial extent. You're actually inputting into that the travel time as well as the aerial extent. Because when I hear GIS, I always think, what's closest? You know? Yeah. I mean, aerial. I don't think that it calculates in travel times. So is there another word for that or... Well, it does figure travel times. It, does. It, it, it figures the speed limits. Okay. It figures controlled intersections. Okay. Uh, it figures, um, uh, yeah. to some degree, That's terrain. okay, but when you're saying GIS, you don't mean the closest area. What you mean is it's already incorporated the travel time issues in those, when you say the word GIS. Is that correct? Well, GIS gave us the travel times. Okay. All right. And when we get later, I have a few questions on the cooperative agreement whenever we hit that. So. Okay, um, uh, Madam Mayor. Actually, in a way, if you think about it, this is um, a perfect opportunity to show that all entities can work together. And now with the duplication of services, um, really sort of states the case for consolidation. So um, congratulations, I like that. Thank you for your cooperation. Commissioner Lucy. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just one quick thing, and I, and I would I would share uh, the mayor's sentiment in regards to this does show that that, at least in, this, in the South Reno area, that this can be achieved um, in a cooperative effort. Um, the other, the one issue that I find is that, uh, Chief, I mean, have we received an opinion back from the LCB in regards to this exact um, opinion in regards to what they, they mean, or the, the senator meant in regards to the bill as it was passed through? Uh, Councilman, uh, I'm sorry, Commissioner Lucy, no, we have not. Uh, again, I've read the statute until my eyes are cross-eyed, and it, it seems to suggest that the agency closest uh, is the one that should respond. And so we use travel time to find closest because geographic proximity didn't always produce the fastest response time. So it, it seems when you read the statute that... Uh, the agency that is closest, regardless of jurisdiction, shall respond. But uh, again, let me say again that we can't respond unless the other agency calls us. So it's not necessarily, and so we were basing the maps based upon the vehicle being located in the engine house, is how the GIS maps were developed. Yeah, that's correct, uh, and, a, and a very good question, because we had to make some assumptions, and the assumptions that we made is that all fire trucks are parked in quarters. But we know all we know all too often that that's not the case, and that the our our, our, our uh, staff and firefighters are out quite often out of the station, just as just as much as they are in the station. So, I mean, from the way I read the 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 law, is that the emergency firefighting vehicle located closest to the structure or brush fire is required to respond, and so that's why I think. The, you know, as the mayor has brought up before, the automatic vehicle locators uh, the, with our CAD system, uh, with dispatch, this should be, uh, you know, this should be, instead of creating boundaries again, that we're just working together cooperatively to move forward to make sure that, that every citizen is constantly being looked after. I agree, and the, uh, we looked at AVL. Uh, not everybody is ready to do AVL, automatic vehicle locators, so the dispatcher can look at a map like this on their computer screen 
and see the location of engine 12, engine 14, engine 39 at any one point in time and dispatch that vehicle regardless of jurisdiction. And that's how they do it in uh, southern Nevada, that the city of North Las- uh, city of uh, North Las Vegas, Las Vegas, Clark County, and Henderson all use that uh, all use that system. So you could have as many as four agencies on a fire if they happen to be the closest. That would be the gold standard of of closest unit dispatching, in my opinion. But we still have a little bit of work to do until we would get there. Uh, nevertheless, uh, we figured out uh, amongst the chiefs that if Let's just say that there's a fire in Reno's jurisdiction and 14 would be closer, but 14 is not at home. Uh, that we, we would radio the city of Reno and say we're not in quarters. But then nothing would really diminish from Reno's standard response. Uh, it's just, it would just be that engine 14 is not available and would not go. So everything to this point sounds, sounds positive that the chiefs have decided that we've, we're going to, you know, every station is going to cooperate. We're all going to work and approach everything at the same time, that it's not going to be one, one uh, entity or another, that we're all, every station, I mean, for every incident, you know, it's going to be a multitask uh, response. And it seems like as we move forward, this is going to be reevaluated year after year, because as we, as we know, uh, to be true, that we are looking at moving Station 14 further, further north uh, into the county, and, and that would so that would completely will, change this. Dynamic. It's going to dramatically change this map mm-hmm. and, and and the efficacy we're going to have in servicing some of these units further down south. So, um, that's all the, my only comments. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Lucy. I believe next we have Mr. Bob Zine. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, and I think that uh, Commissioner Lucy's comments and and what I've heard from Chief Moore sort of paints uh, a picture of what we need to be talking about in terms of next steps. Um, And we can probably have that discussion when we get to agenda item eight after we approve the agreement. You know, the way that I see this is um, this automatic aid agreement is a step forward in this this process, in this discussion, in this relationship. And as I'm hearing from the layman's perspective, the description of the GIS um, data and what's involved in this, um, it is it is a good tool to use, but I think it's a limited tool in that, you know, we are talking about hypotheticals here. We are talking about, you know, is the truck in the station? Is it out on the street, et cetera? And we're going to firm up our understanding of how exactly these responses play out once we get the AVL. So I'm going to be strongly advocating that um, both of our entities uh, move staff and, and encourage staff to really kind of keep that process going so we can get that AVL not only to uh, result in better um, response and service, but also the collection of, of what I would say truer data um, that is actually real world tested um, on how um, this can play out. And then that will be the next step of conversation for how we can better um, work together. And I, you know, in chief, I, I appreciate your insistence that your main motivation here is making sure that you comply with statute. And I would guess that every single one of us up here wants to also comply with the law. Um, but I do think it's important to note the legislative history of this bill and, of course, the insertion of that Section 1, Sub 2, putting the onus on uh, the entities to negotiate these areas. You know, there's a tension here uh, between making sure that we are talking through what the maps are. Yes, the ultimate goal is the closest engine responds, um, but I think if we were to Uh, ask for an LCB opinion, which I I think is a great idea um, for the county to do after we have uh, agreed to the the agreement. What we're going to hear back most likely is not so much does your agreement comport with state law as it will be, you know, when we hear back, um, you know, a few weeks after we make the request, what the provisions are. And, And they would just, you know, provide for us what they think that is. And if anything, that might actually answer the question about what is that balance between the legislation's directive to us to negotiate these service areas versus the other imperative that the closest engine responds. So I I would be interested to hear what they have to say on that, and that could probably help us as we continue down this this road of working together for a more uh, regionalized fire service. Thank you, Mr. Bobsey. And Ms. Jardin. Thank you very much. 
Councilman Bobzian kind of touched on a number of things that I was uh, going to ask some questions or make comment on. Um, the AVL, the automatic vehicle locator, to me is the most critical component of all of this. Um, I think we can all see that great regularity of time fire trucks are out, out of their station, not within them. So that, to me, is a critical component uh, with regards to this. And I would hope we would put similar urgency on the AVLs as we have on this item here today. Um, and with the LCB uh, opinion, while I would value their input on this item, I would caution that it could be a three or four month wait before we got it. So I wouldn't want to uh, hold anything up I'm waiting for that opinion, but I do think there's value in it. So um, again, I applaud all those that got us to this point and I look forward to um, negotiating or discussing some of the finer points and keeping our community safe. Okay, um, Mr. McKenzie. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, and I, I, I too agree with uh, Commissioner Lucy about the ALS or ALB or AVL, excuse me. I get all my acronyms backwards here after we just got done with the hazmat. <laughs> so um, I, I would hope that we would put a timeline on that to uh, to where we're going to move forward and, and make that happen uh, and region wide. And if I if I remember correctly uh, from discussions at the legislative session where uh, the firefighters from Las Vegas were asked about their automatic aid system. Uh, this is one of the points that they brought up of why their system worked is because all the all the vehicles were um, equipped with this with the equipment and um, the closest true closest unit was dispatched first to a fire or or to a medical emergency in their case down there. Uh, but the one concern I've got about uh, these these maps of these areas is is we're we're looking at maps of the areas as they exist today. And my concern is if an entity decides that they want to build a fire station someplace else that disrupts the whole map that we've got originated or we've got uh, laid out before us that we're, that we're agreeing to now, it changes the whole distribution that we've got to go. And that's built in somebody else's jurisdiction uh, and is a duplication of services of another fire station that's already there. And so I, I would hope that as we move forward with this uh, automatic aid agreement that we agree that we're going to sit down and discuss that stuff before we start moving fire stations. For example, uh, if we were to make a decision to build a fire station for the city of Reno in Cold Springs, it wouldn't make a whole bunch of sense because you've already got a fire station in Cold Springs. Uh, it wouldn't make a whole bunch of sense for us to build one in Bird Eye right beside the one that you've got uh, out there to service bird eye and it definitely doesn't make a whole bunch of sense for the county to build one in downtown Reno when we've already got coverage there or for us to build one out by the sewer treatment plant and interfere with this coverage that Sparks has got so um, as we as we do this and I know we're going to have to put more fire stations in all of us are to support the growth in this region I would hope that part of this automatic aid is the fact that we work together to make sure we're not duplicating services and that we aren't trying to overlay into other areas of, of where there's already fire coverage because we're, we're sitting here trying to define how we're going to get the best fire coverage. So if we're going to expend the taxpayers' money to build a new fire station, let's build it where we need fire coverage. Let's don't build it where it overlaps somebody else's. And, and that's my major concern with this entering into this agreement at this time is that we don't have that cooperation moving forward. Thank you, Mr. McKenzie. We're going to go to uh, uh, Ms. Breckus, but after Ms. Breckus, we're going to go to Mr. Liparelli, who has, before we go to the two commissioners, um, Mr. Liparelli has asked to speak. I've got you on here, Mr. Hartung. Ms. Breckus. Thank you, um, <laughs> Madam Chair. Um, you know, I think for me, in broad terms, this is a step somewhere. I'm not necessarily sure that it's a step forward in more efficient um, governance for our region. I, I see a need for a lot more management analysts to think about how to administer this, uh, more attorneys looking it over. The fire people are spending a lot of administrative capacity on it too. Um, so I just don't know. You know, some people call for regional 
fire service, whatever that means, somewhat consolidated fire, whatever that means. Um, I think another special agency is more fragmented governance, um, more special districts with special, um, uh, uh, you know, possibly agendas or dedicated funding source and, and really a continuation of uncoordinated service delivery. I'm very much an advocate of combining the city of Reno and Washoe County into one merged government entity. I think that is the efficiency that we should be thinking about. I think this legislative approach is rather simplistic and we're finding out that it's a very difficult um, administrative task, but we'll, we're moving forward with it. My question on this diverse land use area, actually since Chief, Chief, uh, Chief um, Cochran, on the map about the Lemon Valley, since Chief Moore mentioned that we'd be going into Lemon Valley, and I'm just trying to understand really the operationals implement uh, roles of this. So on this Lemon Valley above Swan Lake, I see a lot of what I'm gonna call probably five, 10 acre rural road, probably septic systems. Um, obviously they have fire hydrants there, right? In, in the county areas, some. I, I'm not as familiar oh. with the hydrant system. Okay, so so you're the first responder out there for fire, um, probably driving maybe on unimproved, unpaved roads out. And I'm talking about this area north of Swan Lake, Idaho, Heart Pain, Matterhorn. Are, are you familiar with this area? Have you driven it? I have been out there, not okay. recently. Are, are your crews going to be like doing training out there and, and like, you know, testing the hydrants and... Um, and then I'd ask Chief Moore the same question, this diverse area that's very commercial, industrial around, you know, the Virginia Street area where we have a lot of different land use, are they going to be out, like, doing the annual inspections and looking at the sprinkler systems? And, I mean, ha have you taken it down to that? There's a lot that goes on, I, I understand, beyond just fighting fires. It's, you know, understanding the land use and going out to these areas to see where you're responding. And so are you flipping those responsibilities? For the record, Dave Cochran, Reno you know, Fire Chief. The, the brief answer is no. Each jurisdiction is going to retain responsibility for its own administrative duties. This agreement just covers responses to brush and structure fires. Okay. We will test, we being Reno, will test our own hydrants. The county will follow whatever process they do to test their hydrants. We have, and I'd say we, my department has quite a bit of familiarity with these areas because when we were consolidated, they actually worked and operated in those areas. Okay. So it's not brand new to them. Okay. Um, but in terms of the administrative functions that you listed, no, that is not covered by this. Agreement. Okay. So if I live out on mistletoe and I know that I'm on five acres and I know where the hydrant is or isn't and I know I'm on an unpaved road, would I ever see a Reno Fire Department come up and do training up in my area? Or, you know, do I, I mean, h how much confidence do I have to know that the, the respondents is someone who you know, knows my area, or if I'm likewise have an industrial building on South Virginia Street and have my my fire hydrant, maybe I'm sprinklered, um, you know, how am I going to, you know, are the people who are coming in going to know what they need to know to do the fires on this area? That's kind of respond to the fires if they're not training on this ground. Well, speaking for my department, I would say you should have 100% confidence in the okay. fire department. Okay, okay. But the training components, we have discussed that, and, and we, the, the three chiefs, with our operations chief, and chiefs, plural, um, and we are discussing a program to, to address what you're concerned about, joint training, joint operations, to make sure that we are all operating on the same page as effectively and as efficiently as possible. Yeah, it would apply to me that the legislation would require you to do, you know, everything that's needed to be that first responder, but then say I'm on Wells Avenue with my vacuum repair shop, you know, am I still going to get you coming in? I mean, are you going to get too stretched, stretched too thin on the inspections role if you're, you know, and vice versa. Well, as we're situated now, that would be a solely Reno response because that's not in one of the automatic aid response zones. And, and again, with the administrative functions, Reno has and will continue to cover those. Okay. Thank you. Certainly. Thank you. We'll go to Mr. Lipparelli before we go for a second round. Thank you, Madam Chair. I thought I might jump in um, on the issue of this LCB opinion before the discussion got too far. Uh, Mr. Hall and Mr. Adams and I are all um, proud of the opinions we write, but if you ask the three of us for an opinion, you might get three slightly different versions of, of things. Um, constitutionally speaking, I don't think the LCB and its lawyers are in the business of advising the, leg the local governments about, about what the laws are. So um, while it's maybe true that a legislator could ask the LCB for an opinion, it's, it's uncommon 
in my experience, for local governments to ask the LCB. So if there are questions about what the law says, um, I'm sure each of us can, can provide you a, an opinion about that. But I'm a little anxious about the idea of inviting the LCB in to, to what seems to me to be um, a local government interpretation of a law that applies to the local government. Thank you, Mr. Liparelli. I would agree with that. Um, uh, Commissioner Hartung. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Chief Moore, could you step up just for a quick second? Back to the AVL issue. Are, are our engines equipped currently with AVL? Yes. City of Sparks? I don't we believe know? City of Sparks is, but uh, Chief Garrison would have to answer that accurately. Chief? Would you would you mind? <laughs> all of our engines currently, uh, for the record, Tom Garrison, Sparks Fire Chief. All of our engines currently have the capability to utilize AVL, but our dispatch system currently does not have the capability. Okay. And as I recall, Tiburon would need a special module purchased by all of us okay. to incorporate Tiburon, but as soon as we go to Tiburon in late October, that would be an option that we could so, certainly put forward. Okay, so, so and, and, and I know the City of Reno is talking about moving this direction, because obviously right now we have to rely on the maps, and that's because that's what we have. So we've really got to go that direction. Uh, Chief, uh, if you would, just for a second, uh, a couple more questions. This is a fire response only, not EMS. Between TM and Reno, it is uh, fire only with uh, City of Sparks. It's all risk. It, it is. Okay. So so City of Sparks, we currently have its, its whatever services we offer in terms of emergency response. Okay. Correct. Um, so I go back to this scenario of making sure that we, I know we're talking about fire only here, but I would hope that we'll talk about EMS. People don't care who responds. They're having an emergency. They don't care whether it's the city of Sparks, the city of Reno, or Washoe County, or RPD, or Sparks PD, or an SO. They don't care who responds. They just want somebody there helping them uh, to get through an emergency. How many, um, how many engines do we have south of McCarran Loop, Chief? TM, TM has uh, five engines south of the McCarran Loop, 14. Well, I won't, I won't count them out for you, five. <laughs> okay. Okay. And, and we intend on cross-training, do we not? Yes. Uh, in, in fact, all of the agencies here, we trained at the same standards. We use NFPA. We run the same evolutions. Uh, we certify to the same standard. Uh, one, one difference is... TM is, is uh, advanced life support with respect to EMS, uh, and, and that's one that's just, I think, the biggest difference between the agencies. But with respect to fire, we, we all follow, na follow national standards, and we train to those standards right. so that a firefighter in any agency has the same skills uh, as, as any other agency because we're trained to these benchmarks that are national standards. Great. Yeah, and again, I go back to I don't care who responds. And I would tell you if you polled your citizens, whether you're in the city of Reno or city of Sparks, and given an emergency, they're not going to turn away aid from anybody. I'm thrilled when anybody responds to, to an emergency for me. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Hartung, Commissioner Lucy, and then Madam Ms. Ms. Doerr. Madam Chair, just a quick comment. And, you know, obviously... Chief Cochran, Chief Moore, thank you very much for all the work that you've done. Um, and I don't want to just uh, convolute the idea that I don't accept the maps as as they've been drawn by you um, by you both. I think that you've done a phenomenal job. I just the, the only reason I was talking about the LCB is that was something down the road. But I think as they're drawn right now, this is just the first step and the most effective step in moving in the right direction for us to make sure that all the citizens are protected. So that was the only clarity I wanted to make. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Lucy. Ma Ms. Doerr. Oh, thank you, Madam. Um, I just had some questions. That we've been talking fairly globally, and I just had a couple qu quick questions probably for both of you on the actual um, cooperative agreement. Okay. So there's a, an item 7H. 
And it talks about reimbursements allowable under mutual aid or automatic aid as a result of declaration of disaster grant cost recovery. And then it goes on to say, um, and shall cover the entire time of commitment beginning from time of initial dispatch from the responding agency's home base to time of return. So this is assuming that we're 12 hours in and it's going to be cost recoverable. Okay. But then it says events that are cost recoverable and payable through state or federal funding, which presumably a declaration has been declared by the federal government of disaster or something, or from third parties determine responsible shall be reimbursable. And I'm just, I'm just confused about the way it's written. I don't know. We're, we're already into a reimbursable situation under the automatic aid, but then we're at layering in a state or federal emergency, and I just I didn't know it shall be reimbursable by whom. And maybe it's a question for our attorneys. I don't know, but reimbursable by the feds, by the state, but within, do you reimburse first to each other and then seek reimbursement from the feds or the state? Is that the way this is supposed to work? That's, that's I was just, I don't know who wrote this, but it was, had a little confusion. I can, I can try to answer that. Uh, there, there's something, if, if there's a wildland fire right. uh, threatening, let's say, multiple residential structures, we can get, ask for the designation of an FMAG, which stands for Federal <clears throat> Management Assistance Grant, in which case then we can get federal funds if they approve it to pay for all of the firefighting costs. Uh, my belief is that, that we can certainly pay the city of Reno if they incur those costs and not ask you to wait, uh, wait uh, because we have emergency fire funds that are several hundred thousand dollars. Uh, we would pay you and then uh, get back from the federal government who are very slow to pay. Right. Uh, eventually, we'll get our money back. Well, this is why I was asking, because there's a lot of things in here that talk about you still submit a bill in 90 days, it should be paid in 60 days. And so I didn't know if the contemplation was the reimbursement would take place, then whoever was owed the money would seek reimbursement from a federal or state agency. So that's question one. I, I think that's accurate. And as Chief Moore described, wherever the fire is, whatever jurisdiction it's in, they have the ability to apply and get right, not that you. grant, right, right. not the assisting agent. Okay, so that explains that. And then the second question I had was on item eight right below it. So this is called assistance by hire. And what was confusing to me about this is it says, um, except for instances of mutual or automatic aid, all requests for fire suppression shall be assistance by hire. And any resources provided by a responding agency and not specifically ordered by a requesting agency list. So you didn't call for them, but they responded because we're a team, um, shall be considered a voluntary contribution and shall not be reimbursed. Okay. But then it says agencies to this agreement will provide current assistance by higher rates. So I was confused. You're voluntarily responding to help each other out, but yet you have a, a repayment schedule. So this was a little confusing to me. I think there's two prongs there. The the voluntary part of that is you can't just show up and say, hey, I worked on your fire, now pay me. Um, so there's not that ability. But the assistance by a higher component is, and I can't think of a good example off the top of my head, but if it falls outside the scope of mutual aid or automatic aid, you are based, and you, and, and you ask for help, you are saying, I am willing to pay for that help. Okay, even That's though, what assistance by a higher is. Even though it says it shall not be reimbursed, this is where I was getting confused, and again, it might be for the attorneys, I'm not sure. On one hand, it says it's voluntary and shall not be reimbursed, and then we immediately say, well, here's the reimbursement uh, schedule. Mr. Leprelli. So I'll take a shot, then I'll invite, um, I'll invite my colleagues in. Uh, first of all, as the chief was explaining, in addition to this paragraph 8, we have this whole other plan. Right, the operate, annual operating plan. An annual operating plan that contains much more detail than this agreement does, and it lays out the reimbursement schedules and all that stuff. Right. But I think what this is aimed at is, it, under the automatic aid agreement, um, the, the response should, should be uh, what was expected by the requesting agency. So if... If, for instance, uh, Truckee Meadows was responding for Reno, Truckee Meadows couldn't roll every single engine it has in oh. its entire district and then try to charge the city for, for 12 engines when, when they, they weren't all needed. So, yeah. so again, given the overlay of the, of the, uh, of the plan that this, the, this agreement incorporates, it's clear to the professionals how, what their expectations are on, on what the response should be. And this because it's in the agreement for reimbursement, says it's uh, by request, for hire by request, or assistance 
by hire, I guess, is the term of art. Do you guys have any further? You can keep conferring until you're ready. <laughs> we got a good example. Okay. No, so, for example, if there was um, – there was an arson fire. Or a what fire? An arson fire. Yes. So there was a request for an investigator, say, from Trekkie Meadows to Reno. So they would be saying, we would like to use your investigator, and we're willing to pay for it. That's assistance by a hire. Okay. Okay. It's not a, a, a voluntary, we're just sending the world and expecting you to pay for everything, even though you didn't ask for it. So they've been called in, and this is just setting out how we're going to pay you for that extra duty. Right. And, and in the, the shorthand is the AOP, the annual operating plan that Mr. Lipparelli referred to, that has the, the reimbursement schedules that you're – Okay. Well, right presumably, I, I don't know if we're scheduled to vote on this today, I assume. So, I mean, it's a little confusing the way it's written, but as long as we've got on the record what the understanding is, I, I'm, I'm fine with that. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. Stewart. Ms. Jardin. Thank you very much. Um, Maybe you can clarify for me or direct me to the correct section. I see lots in here about incident management and who will be uh, – take command of the incident is the first on scene, correct? Correct. Okay, so is that incident commander also the one that would cancel the, the corresponding or other agency equipment if it's not needed? It is, and, and just to back up a little to, so we get the full picture – by definition, the automatic gauge, the first responding agency, should be the outside agency because that's why we have the automatic gate agreement. There's an outside agency, say, Truckee Meadows coming to Reno, who is closer. So they would be first on scene. They would take command. They would immediately transfer command to Reno when the first Reno rig arrived. So now Reno would be in command of that scene. The first company officer from Reno, or battalion chief if they were first, would be in command of that scene. They would be the ones who would assign resources and release resources when they were no longer needed. Okay, so so let's say a scenario is where Truckee Meadows shows up first to uh, a house fire, and they assess that uh, there's their engine can handle it, and Reno's isn't even needed. They at that point couldn't cancel Reno from continuing to roll. In theory, they could, but as a practical matter, what we're talking about, and Chief Moore alluded to it earlier, you're going to have a Reno rig coming in right behind them. They're going to be a minute or two behind, and it's Reno's jurisdiction. So, first of all, Reno wants to maintain control of its own jurisdiction. The other aspect of that is you now have a county rig. If they were to say, we can handle it, we're going to cancel the Reno rigs, you now have a county rig committed to a city incident. Meanwhile, the county district that they came from is going to be unprotected, so there's a cost there. So that's why... You, you're still going to want to transfer to the host or home agency to take control, and they would be the one. It would actually reverse. Reno would take control, release the county rig so that they could go back and cover their district. Okay, okay. and that's what I was getting to because because yeah. obviously we want the closest to show up first, but we also don't want dupl duplicative resources Absolutely. because of limited resources. Uh, and I think taxpayers get yes. uh, frosted when they see multiple trucks show up. I just didn't know wh where is that in this agreement? I believe in that in the um, section that speaks about uh, 12 hours free. Um, I believe there's some language um, that we included in there that actually uh, obligated both sides to release resources as soon as practical. Basically, as soon as the incident is stabilized and it's safe to do so, you release the aiding agency's resource. 7B? Okay. Thank you for that. Thank you, Ms. Doerr. Any other questions? Mr. Schmidt. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just a quick question, if you could, between the, the two mutual aid agreements, the one with the City of Sparks and Truckee Meadows and uh, Tahoe Fire District and the one between that entity and the City of Reno, other than the GIS positions and the fire stations, what are the major changes between the two agreements? Dave Copper, for the record, Reno Fire Chief. I, we have not compared them side by side in that fashion. Um, I will tell you, as a general matter, these agreements are very similar from jurisdiction to jurisdiction. I mean, if we went to Southern Nevada, I think you'd see a very similar agreement to what we have here. So the, I can't give you a, an item by item difference um, other than to say that they, they would be very alike. So the one that City of Sparks has had in place for 15 years with both Reno and Washoe County, we haven't altered those agreements in very much in 15 years, other than other than GIS locations and stations. 
for the record, Charlie Moore, Councilman, no, uh, they're essentially the same, and, and all three uh, rate schedules are essentially as, as, as they are with every other regional partner up and down the Sierra front. So uh, there's not much difference. Thank you. Then uh, my last question is, you know, with three entities, and if I'm correct, that the first one we, we approved was between the City of Sparks and Washoe County's different fire district. This one is between City of Reno and Washoe County. But I don't see the one on there for Reno and Sparks Mutual Aid. Is that one being worked on, or is we, are we all in agreement with that contract and we don't have to worry about it? That is an existing agreement that uh, was not prompted by SB 185, which is the, the new agreement that we're talking about on this agenda item. So that agreement will continue, the agreement between Reno and Sparks. And then I'll get right back to my question that between all three agreements, is there anything that's majorly different between those three agree agreements, one that's in place, the one we just proved on, and the one that's being discussed now? I would say nothing major, but again, having not compared them side by side, I, I couldn't give you a, an item by item. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Schmidt. Any other questions? So I take the opportunity. Oh, yes, of course, Mr. Dris Driscoll. <laughs> Just a point of clarification toward Council Member Schmidt's question. The agreement that we're contemplating between the two agencies at the dais today is fire only. Correct. The agreement that we, that Truckee Meadows has with Sparks is for all fire services, which is medical as well as fire and other things that are there, special teams. So that, that is the significant difference between these agreements. And so for right now, it was contemplated by the professionals that are involved that the fire component was what was important um, for what you're discussing between the two agencies today, the same as Sparks is with where we are with TM, that all services was the most important thing to have in the agreement. Thank you, Mr. Driscoll. So I would take this opportunity to say thank you to all three fire chiefs for the, and your teams for the effort that you've put into this. Thank you to our attorneys who I know have spent a great deal of time going back and forth over exact language on both the operating agreement as well as this document. Um, Chief Cochran, if you have something else you'd like to add, you certainly are welcome. Otherwise, I think we're ready for a motion. I would like to add one thing. I don't think it will affect the, the vote in terms of needing to, to postpone or alter the vote, but I think there are some uh, clarification or correction that needs to be done on the rate schedule from Truckee Meadows. Uh, the rate schedules appear to be different in the agreement with Reno as compared to Sparks, but I think we can handle that on a staff level. Okay, good. And I would also offer, if anybody has any questions on this map that was originally discussed, um, in fact, I'll just suggest, when we, when I constricted this map um, from the greater blue area to the broad black line that you see. What we looked at were a number of factors, and the GIS is important. I think the county did a fantastic job on, on developing those maps, but we considered that one tool. I think if you read the statute, um, and I'll paraphrase because we've uh, heard it several times already today, the closest firefighting vehicle shall respond and take all action necessary to suppress the fire. The statute doesn't give much guidance. It doesn't say closest fire. What is a firefighting vehicle? Is my rig a firefighting vehicle? I think that would be an absurd result if you considered my rig the first on scene to meet the statute. But by the technical reading of it, it's a firefighting vehicle. Uh, it doesn't give us any guidance on what is closest. And I think it's, as soon as you start adding those factors that seem self-evident, the fastest, it should be an engine, should take all necessary actions. What we did was look at all those factors. And a lot of those factors are based on experience. And, and so there, they're not objective where I can say, yes, here's X. Here's a number that you can rely on and say, that is a solid number, it's guaranteed. But I also submit that the GIS number is, like I said, a tool. Um, I ran some numbers over the weekend when it became evident this was gonna be an issue. You pull up MapQuest or Google Maps or any of those numbers and plug in these addresses, you get different numbers. Um, it's an imperfect science. And so we tried to assimilate all the factors that we thought might be important including the experience of our department, district familiarity, uh, those kind of factors that go to the home agency. And they work both ways. They, they go to the county as well and try to consider those factors in determining what is the best response area because there is a cost. Uh, Councilwoman Jordan mentioned it. You know, if you have redundant resources responding, you're leaving something unprotected. So if you don't need to send a redundant resource, let's not do it. That was kind of the motivation there. And we made those adjustments in the south and then a little bit in the north as well. So 
having said that, I'll uh, answer any questions that anyone, anyone might have. Thank you, Chief. Okay, so um, we've already exceeded the 30 minutes that I gave this. So I'm going to give uh, Ms. Breckis and Ms. Dewar the opportunity to make a brief statement. Ms. Breckis. Thank you. Well, I'm just following up on our Chief's uh, discussion of, you know, saying it's a simplistic law with complex operational uh, implementation, uh, ro ro you know, roles for all. So you're trying to tell us that the map that shows that area as a Truckee Meadows area coming into the city of Reno is one that we should determine, no, that's a Reno area. Reno's there quicker. That's, that's what you want us to make that determination. I'm trying to understand what you want With us to do. With one clarification, all, the blue area that you're looking at, that is all city jurisdiction. I understand so that's all city jurisdiction, but it is all area where the city, under the language of the statute, is the first response unit, closest unit, in your mind? Correct. Okay. So I just, I, I just want, as if we move toward motion, I want, um, I would like our body to know that that's a difference to what the materials that we have, that you are asking us to make that dis distinction. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Dewar? Well, following up on the same thing, so it's exactly where she was going. The black hatched area, what are you saying that that's different? What's different about that? That is where Truckee Meadows is closer. It's in okay. Reno's jurisdiction, but Truckee Meadows. All right, Meadows so you've subdivided one of the areas that technically shows it's closer to a fire station, said the black hatched area is actually closer using whatever criteria to Truckee Meadows. Correct. Okay, so that's very helpful. Thank you, Madam Chair, for allowing me to get this clarification. I know I'm going to be asked by my residents that live down there. Sure. So, Thank you, Ms. Dewar. So... Um, I believe that we need a motion from the city of Reno and from Washoe or Sierra Truckee Meadows and Sierra Fire Protection District to um, approve the cooperative agreement between the two entities. Do I have that motion for the county? Madam Chair. Oh, excuse me. We have Mr. Lipparelli first. Madam Chair, um, it's my understanding that um, there are two versions of the of the map um, as exhibits to these agreements. So. Either the two bodies are going to pick different versions of the map or they're going to agree on one or the other maps. Um, and so the motion should be clear on, on what map is being used um, by the boards, whatever their policy decision is on, on which map to use. And uh, as, as has been stated, all of us are concerned about, um, about meeting the mandate of the statute. And so if... If the board is convinced that um, that the testimony from from Reno fire officials uh, is persuasive that that the smaller area is, is the uh, is the better approach, um, it would be helpful if you could also include direction to the to the fire chiefs to get together and confirm the reasons why the the Reno area is different than the TM area so that we can all be satisfied that we're, we're honoring the, statu the statutory mandate. As of now, I'm not sure we're completely in step about the information that was used. The Chief, um, Chief Cochran talked about the factors um, based on his experience and his familiarity with the district. That's certainly valid, but, but we don't know what that is yet. So if you, if you want to go with the Reno map as a policy choice, um, feel free, but, but give us the ability to confirm uh, the, what those other factors are, and then we can all be certain that we're, we're meeting the statute. Thank you. One moment, Ms. Commissioner Hartung. Um, let me ask a question of Mr. Liparelli. <clears throat> Sorry, Mr. Okay, Mayor. Okay. Um, quick question, Mr. Liparelli. So if, if it comes down to the fact that the uh, Truckee Meadows Board approves one map, set of maps, or it's, I think it's only this one map, and the city of Reno approves another set of maps, aren't we still leaving this in the control of the fire chiefs as to whether or not to call the other entity in? Well, simple question, a complicated answer. The statutory mandate <laughs> is that the answer. entity responsible for the emergency firefighting vehicle located closest to a structure or brush fire uh, is, is responsible to respond. So this agreement is supposed to be the definition of, of what that is so both agencies know what they're required to do. If, if the governing boards adopt different maps, then we have a dysfunctional arrangement. 
um, because it, it's not going to be clear to the fire chiefs whether or not they're supposed to respond and where. So I, I think the aim of the statute was to mandate um, the response, but it also gave the agencies an opportunity to agree on what that should look like. So what I'm suggesting is if, if you're persuaded that Reno Fire Department knows this territory um, well enough to know that that's a, a truer reflection of the, of the closest engine, then choose that, but, but make sure that we're going back afterwards and confirming that um, the information that, that, that the Reno Fire Department relies on to, to establish that boundary is something that, that we can be satisfied meets the, the statutory mandate. Thank you. Commissioner Hartung. Thank you, Madam Chair. So, Mr. Liparelli, if, if we were to direct uh, the chief to share the data uh, amongst themselves or the chiefs to share the data amongst themselves to determine that the maps are fair, would that be adequate? Okay, so let, before we take a motion, let's go to public comment. We have three, um, Robert Parker, followed by Bob Ackerman, and then Tom Dunn. Public comment? <laughs> this is from Mr. Parker. I know Mr. Parker is not in the room, at least I don't see him. He has submitted a statement. Okay, he submitted a statement. He would like me to read it. So, okay. I am Bob Parker. My wife and I live in Galena, and our background is in program management in the aerospace business. We've been impressed with how Chief Moore and his staff go about working out problems in a methodical and transparent way, achieving excellent results. The solution to this requirement is a good example. First, they define the problem, nearest apparatus to a fire. Then, they used the GIS system to find the areas that needed automatic coverage and explained what they were doing and why. Finally, they produced maps showing these areas where automatic aid was needed based on the process they went through. Easily understood, easily explained to the legislature. In, in contrast, there's Mr. Cochran's statement to the press. We think we can get there faster in South Reno where he lives. No method, no specifics, just the usual, trust us, we're Reno Fire. And then there's Manager Kling Klinger's statement about how Reno Fire has four people on an engine and its citizens expect that because they're paying for it. Interesting statement, but you can have 10 people responding, and if they don't get there, it doesn't matter. And isn't that the point of this? Get there in time to make a difference, no matter what agency. Thank you. Next. We have Bob Ackerman, followed by Tom Dunn. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, commissioners and council persons. Bob Ackerman, 25. Golden Current Circle, Galena Forest. I'm all for safety, and I'm with uh, Commissioner Hartung. More, t more too much than too little. And I'm in support of the proposal by the Truckee Meadows uh, Fire Department. And it's what we're talking about here, our lives. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ackerman. We have Tom Dunn. Good, Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Tom Dunn, for the record, uh, Vice President of Reno Firefighters Association, and also I'm a resident of the Truckee Meadows Fire Protection District. Um, just a few comments on some of the questions I heard asked today. Um, I heard the Las Vegas model of automatic aid being offered up. Well, one of the things why the Las Vegas model for automatic aid is so successful is that that uh, type of system has been in place since 1977 when they first enacted that automatic aid issue. And since then, there has been joint training, joint policies and procedures, joint communications, joint AVLs, joint everything since then. Uh, from 2000 to 2012, you had that under a consolidated fire department. There was no duplication of service. There was one fire department with one set of policies and procedures, one set of response criteria, and one set of run cards. There was no duplication of effort. Automatic vehicle locators, that is a great uh, best practice and needs to continue on. Station location, 
There was an issue with station locations currently, as there was an issue with station locations 20 years ago. There was a study done on station locations in the late 1990s, and once again, this problem was addressed in the ESCI study back in 20, 2011. Um, to summarize real quick, you know, what, what's happening today is we're going back to where we were back in 1994, 1996, with an automatic aid agreement between a city fire department and a county fire department. That agreement ultimately was found to be deficient in several areas, and that's what led to consolidation in 2000. Unfortunately, due to uh, uh, decisions beyond our control, the decision was made to deconsolidate. So what we're back to today is we're back to a 1990s model of fire uh, delivery at 2015 prices. And my question to you is, does that really benefit the community? Does that benefit the taxpayers? Does that benefit the residents to the greater Truckee Meadows and our region? So this automate, automatic aid agreement is a great thing moving forward. What I would like to see continuing on as well, whether in the annual operating plan or something else, is to address some of these concerns, such as joint policies and joint procedures. Because even though we're all firefighters, even though we all meet a certain set of criteria and standards, our department policies and procedures are completely different. I can guarantee you and I can tell you that today I do not have a copy of Truckee Meadows policies and procedures in my fire station. So in order for me to respond into their district to ensure that we are not doing anything that could harm their firefighter safety, we need to make sure that everybody, everybody is on the same page. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other public comment? No, there is no more comment. Okay, we'll close public comment, bring it back to the board. Commissioner Hartung. Thank you, Madam Chair. And um, not responding to the public comment, uh, I could not agree more. I think everybody should be sharing policies. I think that's a, that's a, a valid point. Um, I would make a motion to direct uh, our chief to work with uh, the chief of the city of Reno to share data amongst themselves to determine that the maps are fair and workable and if they need to, bring it back to us. You also need to move to approve the cooperative agreement since that's um, for automatic aid and mutual aid since that's our goal for today. So moved. Okay. Do I have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Madam Mayor. All right. City of Reno, may I have a motion? Madam Mayor, if I might, and just a, a, a little bit of commentary before I, I make the motion. Um, you know, as, as I've stated in the past, this is a point in time, this is a step forward, and I think this is a very valuable step forward, and I want to congratulate the two chiefs, um, all of our staff um, at both the county and the city for working on this, and, and, and frankly, all the electeds for keeping the conversation going. Um, you know, Madam Mayor, you uh, insisted very early on that we were going to meet and meet and meet until we got this done, and, you know, thank you to you and to um, Commissioner Brooke Bigler and all of our uh, colleagues for, for staying on this, keeping the focus on this, and getting us to this point. Um, I, I do um, appreciate the approach that this final little piece about the maps I do think can be worked out uh, amongst the commissioners. But that said, I do have some worry that uh, October 1 is right around the corner, and I definitely don't want to hear back on October 2nd that, well, we still have a problem with the maps. I will say this. Um, as I said before, the GIS tool is imperfect. Um, we would be fools to think that the GIS is all we need to make our decisions on. That said, it is something, and I do think that we can start there um, with that basis. And frankly, as we move forward with the experience from this in real world terms, as well as the AVL development, where we're really going to have some data to be able to look at this and dive deep, let's get this in place now. Let's operate with this, and then we can keep on um, moving forward with that. Again, what we're doing today, I think we're rising above a lot of the invective, a lot of the rhetoric that we've been hearing about, you know, so-and-so is the better fire department, this chief's better than that chief. I mean, our community is tired of this. They don't want to see uh, the entities fighting. They want to see the entities serve uh, our region and get this done. And I think that that's what we're doing here today. So, Madam Mayor, with that, I would make the motion to uh, accept the automatic aid agreement between the Truckee Meadows Fire Protection District, Sierra Fire Protection District, City of Sparks Fire Department, and North Lake Tahoe Fire Protection District in regards to SB 185 compliance with the direction to the chiefs to um, figure out the, uh, the last remaining details on the maps. All right. Thank you, Thank you. Councilman Bob Zoom. So I have a motion and a second. We have discussion, Madam Mayor. Um, so the motion as it is, is the chiefs would be providing us 
making the decision. Is that, as I understand it, the Chiefs would be getting back to us by October 1st, Mr. Bob Zine? on what map they've selected? I've not set a specific time okay. for them to get back. I think they have enough um, understanding of where we want them to go uh, as the electeds that they'll get the last remaining map piece figured out. Um, it may happen that we hear back that there's an issue, but my hope is that it won't happen, that it'll just get done. And for what it's worth, my the intent that I'm trying to put out here with the motion is that you know this can be a work in progress. This is not the be all and end all of these maps. Um, the GIS analysis may be uh, not enough. It probably isn't enough, but for purposes of getting this down the road, um, let's go with that and, and leave it to the, the chiefs to, similar to how Washoe County has approached this, leave it to the chiefs to work out the final details on the maps. Okay. I mean, I heard flexibility from Chief Moore about this area, so um, I guess not representing this area, I, I understand the motion. I, um, I've had a really hard time with this law. I understand we are creatures of the state, and the state has mandated us what to do, and the question really is, is this the best agreement or, you know, living in the chaotic world of no agreement? I, I am concerned that the maps demonstrate Reno going into a lot more of unincorporated Washoe County, essentially providing services to unincorporated Washoe County residents quite a bit, and uh, that causes me concern. I represent the skyline area of southwest Reno, where we have a browned out fire station, and I just can't see that having Reno firefighters leaving the municipal boundaries, heading up into the unincorporated areas for fire response is going to help you know, the goal that I know Southwest Reno residents want, which is that fire station staffed up. So I, I can't see it's a for way forward in that, in that gap. I also have concern that the same $250,000 appraised condo on Skyline, off of Skyline, pays $368 less a year than someone up on Mistletoe, up in Lemon Valley, where Reno will be providing fire services um, in property tax. And so, you know, uh, it's going to be hard to talk to people about the equity issues uh, that we see. But, you know, I guess there's some tickers in here on when this will collapse or when we'll be reviewing it again. But I, I, I want to explain my strenuous concerns about Reno residents who pay annually higher property taxes and now we're going to see those property taxes going out into unincorporated Washoe County where property taxes are less. So. All right, thank you Councilwoman Bruckus. I, I would just like to say this is work in progress. We're coming from um, a, a very, uh, you know, difficult time and from seeing where we are from uh, where we started, um, I'd like to commend both Chiefs, Chief Cochran, Chief Moore. I think you guys have done a phenomenal job. Um, so I think there is some credit that certainly needs to be uh, due there. But um, and also, um, Commissioner Hartung mentioned, you know, people don't care who responds. They just want response. So I would agree with that, and that also helps us work towards consolidation. I think there's a lot of people in this room that would agree consolidation will help save money, and it will also better service. So, you know, we're getting there, and we've come a long way. So I'd like you to recognize that. Um, Councilwoman Dewar. Yeah. Um, I think I would be shirking my responsibility if I didn't at least ask. I mean, if there is, if Chief Moore is comfortable with this South Meadows map, I would just as soon incorporate it into the agreement. If you think there are still questions about to be discussed, I totally respect that. But if you're comfortable today, I'd rather get it done, you know. And do, do you have a feeling, Chief Moore? I mean, I, I guess we're talking about the map that was just up, and I'd just rather get this thing done, but if you think there's more conversation has to happen. For the record, Charlie Moore, Fire Chief, Trekkie Meadows. Ultimately, the city has to be take responsibility for when you call us. I can't compel you okay. to, call, uh, to call me into the city of Reno. So if you, Council, uh, are satisfied with the map, I'm satisfied. Uh, although I, I'm, I still want to go on record to believe that, that uh, to say that I believe that TM is is faster in some areas. Okay. Uh, but this will but, always be the case. But, but there'll be but, but there's more work to do, perhaps. Yeah. And, and, and so what I'm saying is, as just a get starting point to adopt today to be refined, I am sure through an annual operating agreement and through further conversation, if you see a need to change boundaries, I'm just wondering if you're comfortable. And our chief is comfortable if we could just stipulate to this map they showed. I don't want to put any pressure on you, though, if you have reservations. Here's you know. what I think the overriding point ought to be is this is way too important to uh, quibble about uh, a, a specific area because there are structures just 100 feet away from 
our stations and, and, and vice versa. Okay. So I would urge uh, I would urge all electeds here to approve this uh, because it's far too important to the safety of the citizens and we can work out additional details. And when you say this, we originally got a map in our packet, that's what you're saying? Or when you say this, it, it includes this list of maps, right? We did not put we did not uh, put in our staff report the uh, the map that was just on the screen. So that's, uh, Madam Chair, where uh, you need to be uh, clear with respect to what you're adopting is if you want to accept uh, the Reno's boundary, and I have no problem with the board accepting that for now, with the caveat that we'll continue to work on refinements if there are, if there oh. are any. Uh, but I, I think to make sure that your staff understands exactly what it is we're, we're agreeing to because there's additional CAD programming that needs to be done, that that's uh, a good enough point for me. Today. Okay. All right, and I guess our chief, do, do you concur? I'd just like to get this put to bed so that as of this day, we know what we're doing and we keep working for the future. No, I think that's a, a good recommendation. I would echo that with the commitment that I would work with Chief Moore to refine that if necessary, but to have a definitive map adopted today so that we're moving forward and ready for October 1st. Okay, and that would be the one you just had up on the screen? Well, I have actually a, a more distinct version did. of that, but yeah. Yeah. What's up? I, I have a, a better defined version of that with me. It, but it, essentially, yes, it's the area up on the screen. Yeah. Okay. Would you prefer... Councilman Bobzian? Yeah. I apologize. Okay. That's okay. Ma Madam Mayor, in the, in the spirit of trying to get this to bed, um, you know, I think the spirit of my motion was to be 100% in alignment with the motion that was just passed by Washoe County. Exactly. I think we've had thorough discussion of what the differences are between the maps, and I have confidence in our staff that they can figure out this last little... Uh, wrinkle that needs to be ironed um, so I, I would just okay stand by the motion that was that was made that's on the table okay. I just if we could have rich clarity be done today I was good with that too all right I, I think this does get it motion. done today I have a motion and a second all those in favor say aye aye, aye. all those opposed motion carries unanimously okay. Oops, excuse me. Um, Mr. Liparelli, I've been asked to make sure that the motion from the county was right on and it covers the issues we need for this particular agreement. The, the question, Madam Chair, is does the motion that I, I proffered, does it uh, comport with, with all of the requirements, Mr. Liparelli? The notes I took uh, include the, the approval of the agreement and um, direction to the chiefs to share data and come to an agreement on on the areas and and bring back the map um, for for final uh, consideration so I think we might be a little bit off um. yeah I I don't know that I, I don't know that it was the intention to bring anything back for final consideration no so well, in that so, event madam chair what I'd suggest is uh, is you reconsider your earlier motion and and make the one that you want to make that's clear okay Commissioner Hartung? Yeah, that was not your motion. Yeah. Commissioner Hartung? No, Madam Chair. The, the intent for me was to approve the cooperative agreement between Truckee Meadows and Sierra Fire Protection in the city of Reno for automatic and mutual aid. That's, that was the intent. But to have the chiefs work together, if the city of Reno feels that the, the smaller map is workable, I'm okay with that. If they they feel that the larger map is workable, I'm okay with that also. I mean, I, I, I truly have no issue. If they don't feel like they need our help in certain areas, I'm not going to force it on them. So I don't, I, that, that was the intent of the motion initially, was just to let them work out the issue in terms of the map. Okay, good. Do I, does the seconder agree with that? Madam Chair, yeah. Okay, so now we have a clarification on the motion of exactly what the county intended. It was not the intention of this county um, commission or the fire board to require that the chiefs come back and report to us on anything. That they're the professionals and we do not need to be micromanaging their business. Okay. So which map did the county uh, or the district adopt? We were accepting the Reno's, we're accepting the Reno's map as presented Reno's currently. Presented. And discussion to continue on as we move forward. Correct. Is that? That is yes. the, that is the way we, we the original map that has just yes. a small blacked out range with the black. Yeah, I might be the confused one because I thought Councilman Bobzian's motion was to use the GIS based map and work towards refining it. But 
but maybe I didn't understand it. Councilman Bobzian. If I might, I was purposefully vague uh, in... <laughs> <laughs> A true the, politician. The, the point that I wanted to make was to acknowledge the expertise uh, by which both chiefs um, are examining this issue and express confidence that they could work it out. Um, I, I think we're all on the same page here, Matt, Madam Chair. You know, this was the point of that key amendment to SB 185, we have now gone through the exercise of negotiating these areas of of automatic aid, and that's a good thing. And quite frankly, we're going to keep going through this. I could see us having a needed update discussion, you know, six months from now, 12 months from now, whenever it is, but to get this going and get it in place and put it to bed, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll follow your lead, uh, Washoe County. And um, if, if you're good with the Reno maps, we'll figure it out, great. If it's the other way, whatever. We'll, we'll have the chiefs figure it out and we'll, we'll get it done. And, I, and, and if I may, Madam Chair. Certainly. Um, my belief is, and perhaps the, the, the cores should correct me if I'm wrong, but these kinds of documents would seem to me to be living documents. We're always reevaluating them. If you put in a, a new subdivision, if it gets built then, and, and we have a closer station, then maps are going to change slightly. And I, and I think it is up to the, the chiefs, to the two cores, to decide those kinds of things along the way. And, and I, I think they're we have uh, competent staff on both sides. I have no issue that they're going to be able to find a solution. Okay, Mr. Leparelli, are you satisfied? Can we vote now? Well, let me, let me just uh, put it this way. I would be looking at this from the standpoint of, of what the public record shows and, and the uh, exhibits that were attached to the, to the agreement that was submitted by the Truckee Meadows Fire Chief to the Truckee Meadows Fire Protection District Board um, are the larger boundaries, not the cross-hatched area that Councilman Dewar was pointing out. The county's map is the larger map. So I just want to make sure that whatever the intent of the, of the fire commissioners are today is clear uh, from their vote, because looking at it from the paper record, I would assume you adopted the larger map. So if you're not adopting that, if you're adopting Reno's version of the map, let's make sure we have a motion that says that, and then we'll all know. So um, uh, perhaps I should, again, ask this question of the city of Reno. Which map would you like us to adopt? Would you like us to adopt the larger map or the smaller map? Oh, but don't be purposely vague. <laughs> no, no. No, no. No, no, after you. No, no, after you. Okay, <laughs> gentlemen. We've played this game long enough. Um, we are getting along. Truly. I think we're on record from the. It's our area. It's our area. Let's do the Reno. Map. Okay, thank you. I, I think we're on record from the um, Truckee Meadows Fire Board that we have some concerns about whether we'd be in compliance, but that we agree that the powers that be in our fire departments are clear. They know what they're doing, and we are going to adopt the smaller map. The Reno map. The Reno map. How about a motion? <laughs> All right. Yeah, so we have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right. So we may I get a motion, please. Uh, do we need to do a motion to reconsider prior? So a motion. I a, motion a motion to reconsider, reconsider our previous motion. Okay. So I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries unanimously. All right. Now. Give me a new motion, please. And, and Madam Mayor, I would then um, make the new motion that we approve the automatic aid agreement between um, the entities previously referenced um, with the specific uh, uh, component that we are adopting uh, the Reno um, suggested maps. All right. Thank you very much. So I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much. We'll move. Are we going to... Address number eight, since we've had such a delayed day, or, um, okay, we're going to address number eight. Mr. Driscoll. Thank you, Madam Chair, uh, members of the commissions and the councils. Um, what is contemplated in number eight is each of the three jurisdictions that are represented here, actually four, including the fire board, have different rules for allowing their staff to get involved in research projects and to work together. And so what the three managers are proposing with this agenda item is to get 
approval by the by the four boards that are here to represent today for the managers to get together with our professional staffs and to clearly define the services to be provided under fire service it's more than suppression it's the whole gamut starting from dispatch to special teams and then once we define those and most of that work's already been done it's not like we're starting from scratch define service levels and then once we define the service levels, which has been a lot of the conversation today, then and only then would we actually get down and discuss governance of those service levels. So, for instance, we've used different words today for different parts, and the idea here is to provide the best service level to our citizens for fire services in the region, and then we'll figure out what that does. So it would require us to do some work to finalize a lot of things we've already done, and then we'd be coming, the managers would be coming back to the elected boards for policy decision to go to the next step. So what we're asking today is for the elected boards to authorize our staff to use resources and time commitment to do the research and to report back. Thank you, Mr. Driscoll. Mr. Schmidt. Thank you, Madam Chair. I guess my only question, uh, Mr. Driscoll, is why would we not want our managers to and our professional staff be involved in that type of discussion. That's why I'm hoping that it'll be approved. I'll be more than happy to make a motion if the mayor likes for the Go for it. Clerks. I'll be more than happy to make a motion to authorize city manager and staff to enter in those discussions. Second. Motion by Mr. Schmidt, seconded by Mr. Smith. Any questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passed unanimously. Thank you. Madam Mayor. All right. <clears throat> we have a motion. Councilwoman Chardon. I would make a similar motion, the same motion that Sparks made. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. County Commission or um, County Fire Board or is it the Commission? It's both. The County Commission and the County Fire Board. Commissioner Jung. I see something totally different on our agenda. Item 8, it's direction by each governing board to its staff on items for agendas of possible future meetings. Isn't that what we're looking at, Mr. Lipparelli? The agenda, the agenda I have, the, the wording on item 8 is possible direction by each governing board to its That's respective right. staff to discuss items related to future fire services. Okay, so I don't think we need that kind of motion because ours isn't the same as what Sparks was. And what I would like to use this time, Madam Chairwoman, is to give some direction to um, staff for future agenda items or issues that we might be able to get some information via email even, not waiting till the next meeting. One of those was um, what I believe to be a factual inaccuracy, and I'm sorry that Councilwoman Breckus is gone now, um, but the unincorporated, I shouldn't say unincorporated county, the Truckee Meadows Fire Protection District does have a dedicated uh, property tax for them that is completely their operating budget. We don't general fund them. They, they know what their spread is. And then people also pay property taxes on top of that. So if staff could send like a one-sheeter that kind of shows what does Reno people pay, what does Sparks people pay, and then what do uh, TM because uh, not everybody in the unincorporated county is in TM as well. I hope you guys know that. So it's, it's once we get to the frontier area, they don't have um, a response there that they are funding through fire. So that's that's the first thing. And then I agree with uh, one of my favorite guys, Mr. Dunn, um, that we do need to have shared with each other across jurisdictions what are our operations, annual operations plan. And we also need to make sure in some shape or another, and I'm sure the chiefs are thinking about this as well, but making sure that our policies and procedures are the same so that there isn't a question as to how do we each handle each other in each jurisdiction because ultimately we don't want to be putting anybody at risk or making them have to second-guess themselves to take further time to address what the issue is. So I, I would look forward to that as well. I, I, and I brought this up when we met previously and that was, let's also have a, a report back as to when we can start training together. I know there's been a hiring freeze, and, and, and that hasn't really been a reality. But let's start building those processes and steps so people all train through the same academy. That way they know um, that they can trust all, all uh, potential people who are responding to a, a potential fire. 
Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Thank you, Commissioner Jung. I actually don't think there's any reason why we couldn't add those things in and ask the staff to do that. But I do believe we need direction to our staff to have them meet with these other two staff persons. Thank you. Do I have a second? I have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Driscoll. Madam Chair, I was just going to clarify with the discussion when we talk about all services, training is a major component. So certainly what was being brought up by Commissioner Jung is on our agenda for future discussions with the managers. We're already talking about it. We already do it. We need to be very specific about how that addresses service level. And so we certainly would be hitting that topic and actually being in even more detail than is being suggested by the commissioner. So um, I think we'll be okay. With Thank the you, Mr. Driscoll. Appreciate it. All right, we're down to final public comment. Madam Clerk. Madam Chair, we have Jeff Church. Okay. I don't think he's here. This was from this morning. He's probably not here. Okay. Well, in that case, we'll close public comment, bring it back to the board. Do I have an, a motion for adjournment from the commission? So moved. <laughs> Uh, motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 City Sparks. Second. Uh, moved by Smith, seconded by Schmidt to adjourn. Any questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Pass unanimously. City of Reno. Move to adjourn. Second. And a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Ooh. I know.